If you order medium rare steak and they bring it well done and you freak out, you need bigger problems. If someone cuts you off in traffic and you yell at them and flip them off, you need bigger problems. Look for bigger problems to solve and stop giving a damn about all the little stuff. Listen, think about this. I'll get to this point right away. At the end of our lives, if I'm 95 and we're here together and we're like in the last, we're in the final few minutes of the game, right? You're gonna look back and say, why the hell did I worry about all that little shit when I could have been focused on what? Being a bigger, better version of you. I say this all the time, but I wanna repeat it again. If you order medium rare steak and they bring it well done and you freak out, you need bigger problems. If someone cuts you off in traffic and you yell at them and flip them off, you need bigger problems. If a friend goes to the mall and you thought he should have asked you to go with them or her with them and they didn't and you're freaked out, I can't believe they would do that to me and you're feeling, having a pity party, you need bigger problems. If a, like, just think of all the little things right now. Someone takes your parking spot. Someone disrespects you and you thought the waiter should, waitress should be nicer. The toll taker was rude when they handed you back the money. If that stuff is bothering you, you are screwed. Wow, that was pretty aggressive, wasn't it? But you are, because you don't have time in your life for the needle movers. You're too worried about the low level shit. Does that offend you? I'm sorry if it does. I'm here to help you, not to, not, to, not to coddle you, you know? I'm not super aggressive, but I tell it like it is. You need bigger problems. The same fears, the same stress, the same worry I had when I was making 50 grand a year feels the same right now. When my brand is done, my brands and my companies broke over a billion dollars in sales a couple years ago. I've been through all phases. The feeling on the inside doesn't feel any different. You know that. Think about in your life, in your past, the things that used to make you sick, but they're this big. Now you're like, oh my God, I was worried about that, but now I'm worried about this. Someday you'll look back at the problems you have now and be like, oh my God, that was nothing. Get bigger problems. Start searching out. If you can solve bigger problems, you get bigger checks. If you can solve bigger problems. Listen, let, let me just equate this to love. Let's just say, right? Relationships can be tricky. I was open enough and transparent through my whole divorce. I, I, I didn't make it through it. But I'm in a relationship now that's incredible. But it's work and I solve bigger problems. I put the work in. You want real love in your life, it's work. And it's not about proving your point or be, just becoming a better human being. It's about better, it's about compromise. It's about better listening. It's about better dedication. It's about better trust. It's about, it is work and it's solving big problems. I think in my old relationship, I was just like, it ain't working. You know, either step up or step out. I'm not, I'm over exaggerating, but it's work. And guess what? If you want to live the easy way, do the hard things. If you want to live the hard way, do the easy things. Listen, I got up this morning at 4.45 and went to the gym. My trainer kicked my ass. It was hard. But I'm 50 and I'm in pretty damn good shape and I'm going to live long and I don't have any complications. I'm not on any medications. I feel incredible. So it was hard to get up at 4.45, which I do six days a week. It is hard, but I'm living easier. I stand up straight, I feel incredible, I could beat my, I could beat most anybody in a running race and I, I feel great, hard to work out, easy life. I do the hard things in a relationship, I have an easy relationship because of it. I do the hard things with my kids and, and set the lessons now even if they get mad at me, but I'm gonna have an easier adulthood with them. Want a better life, do the hard things now so life can be easier. Want a better life, get bigger problems in 2019. You guys ready for this? Who's willing to commit right here, right now, in front of your Dean's Inner Circle family that you are ready to commit to bigger problems? If you're not live, that's okay. I'm glad you're here watching. Get here next month live when you get the notification. But right now, commit to bigger problems. Love all the, come on, I'm watching them come in. Thank you, guys. Okay. Number three, yes, I'm going to make you a commit to each one of these. This is what you pay me for. 
you're here. I know you're, I, I'm not messing around with you. You cut a check and more than that, what you pay for this is, I'm, I'm just, I'm not being disrespectful. In comparison, that's nothing, right? Think of it how much per day. But what I respect you just as much as you cutting a check is your time. You're with me here today, whether you're watching live or, or watching the recording. You took the time to be here. You're not just someone who talks about it or complains about it or blames the president, your friends, your family. It's like you're here doing it. You don't think I have so much respect for you? It's unbelievable. So the next one, number three, just say no. In 2019, it is time to analyze all the things that you do and start saying no. Listen, you know how obsessed I am with a not to do list. You know that and we've covered that. But for those of you that are new, those of you who aren't really doing it, if those of you who aren't doing it on a regular basis, even my DG family members who've been with me for 10, 15, 20 years, some of you, are you really doing this at the level you need to? Are you spending time on the needle movers? Or are you wasting time on things that don't matter? Listen, I said something on stage, I said it yesterday in my video and I, and I really like it, but if you're in a treadmill and you're dying to get someplace, it doesn't matter if your treadmill is on 4 or 14, you can run as fast as you want, you ain't getting anywhere. You're not on a track, you're not on a road, you're on a treadmill. Are you on a treadmill in your life in some areas? Are you going fast? Are you pushing hard? Do you feel overwhelmed? Do you feel stressed? Do you feel there's not enough time in a day? You're trying real hard? But when you look down, that might be the place you have to look. It's because you're running on a treadmill. You're going faster, quicker, harder. I can get there, I can get there, I can get there. No, I'll go faster, I'll go quicker, I'll go faster, I'll go quicker. I got it, I got it, I got it. And then you look and you go, wait, I didn't move. Because you're running on a treadmill. And that, just that analogy, I want that to stick in your head. The analogy is simply this. Someone walking up a ladder will get a lot further and distance than someone running on a treadmill. So do you want to be a ladder person or a treadmill person? A ladder person, and I'm making this analogy, I'm making this up as I go, okay? So stick with me here. Knows what moves the needle in their life by analyzing and simultaneously just saying no. What in 2019 must you say no to? Let's just, be honest. Let's, just say, let's just sit and ponder this for a minute. I'm not going to just blow through this. In fact, I want some of you to commit and, start, and, and say it out to the rest of the group. What are you going to say no to? Are, do you go on Facebook because you want to do something productive and get some personal growth, which is great, and then all of a sudden you get sucked in by stupidity and you realize three hours have gone by? Do you need to say no to that? Is that positively impacting your life? Do any of you geek out on news for hours? Do any of you have negative friends that there's something fun about them, but you hang out with them, but every time you leave them, it's a little bit of doubt gets dumped into your soul and it builds up until one day you're like, I can't do this. And you didn't realize it was all the negative people in your life. Do you have to say no to them? Do you have to say no to things that don't you know, really matter? No to the stress worrying about your mother-in-law, your cousin, or your friend Sally who talks shit about you. You spend wasted time stressing about something you can't change. What some people think about you is none of your freaking business. It's theirs. I don't know what it is. I appreciate you guys doing this around. Social media, I'm, uh, Netflix bins watching. Say no to watching TV so much. Trying to satisfy my ex-wife. Um, no to social media, listening to negative people, toxic people, uh, Netflix binging, procrastination, sleeping too late, TV, junk food. See what I mean? I've been talking about this forever. It's okay. But you need to listen for the first time. What are you going to commit to? Do you, do you see why I said these are the things that you can bolt on to your goals and actually make them happen? Because if, let's just say someone said binge watching, right? Or spending hours on social media, hours on Netflix. Um, Think about this. If you don't say no to that, how are you going to fit in all the goals you wrote on your list? Fix my relationship, get in better shape, make more money. Hey, shit ain't going to happen. There's no time for it. Like, it's, it's so obvious to me. I'm, I'm just, listen, I'm being frank as I can with you guys. This is, you guys are like family. It is so freaking obvious now. Tell me you're not thinking about it right now. If this is obvious to you, please say yes, it's obvious. Or hell yes, it's obvious. You can't reach your goals 
if you don't say no to the crap that's eating up your time. If you don't say no to the negative people, no to binge watching, no to too much social media, no to procrastination, no to sleeping in, no to eating the bad food that makes you feel like crap, that makes you go to sleep early, then you look down at yourself, you're like, oh, I just feel bad, and then you don't have any confidence. If you don't say no to that, is there any chance in hell you're gonna reach your goals this year? Nope, ain't gonna happen. Time to say no. Time to say no right now, right today. Are you committed to saying no? Yeah, I'm asking you every time. I'm anchoring you. That's what it's called. It's called anchoring. I'm anchoring you. Commit right now to saying no to the shit that's not moving the needle in your life. Amazing. Guys, this is the best group on the planet. Seriously, you guys are so awesome. Okay, you ready for number four? Um... Okay, this is one, this is, the, this is the part. You know what I love talking about this stuff for? Is because, and I'm seeing all your notes. I'm gonna go back and look at all these guys. I promise you, I'll go back. So if you got something to say, you say it, and I'm glad you're committed. Um, so many times, now that you're part of my family, you know my values, you know what I stand for, you know how I teach, like you get it, right? A lot of times people see from the outside, and I'll teach some of this, and they'll go, yeah, but how do I get rich? And I'll share the same stuff I'm sharing. Like, yeah, yeah Dean, that's cool. That's that personal growth stuff. But how do I get rich? <laughs> and I think people are looking for like this magic, like, all right, you got me. Hold on. Ah! And like sunbeams shoot out. And there's this magic little thing that you do, and you get rich. This is how you get rich in life, rich with love, rich with happiness, rich with peace. These are truly the secrets. People are looking for the magic. There's no magic. It's this. It's what we're talking about today. You can't fit the things in your life you need to do to be wealthy, successful, happy if this other crap is in your life. That's just the way it works. I wish I was this clear, oh my God, in my 20s. But I've been an entrepreneur. This is something you got to realize. I've been an entrepreneur for over 30 years. I'm 50 this year. I did my first real estate deal at 17. That's 33 years, holy cannoli. Um, but also, I've been in teaching success for over 20 years. I've been obsessed with personal growth for over a decade, reading a book every 10 days, friends with Tony Robbins, Brandon Bouchard, Richard Branson, like I obsess on this. So a lot of what I share is not just some, oh, this guy got rich and he's just sharing his shit. Like, this is well thought out, things that I wish someone would have given me in my 20s. And when you understand it on that level, you realize this is where happiness, this is where wealth comes from. All right, thank you guys. I, I see, preach it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, number four. You ready for this one? You're gonna be like, really? This is a way to get happier and get my goals? In 2019, I'm gonna ask you to forgive. Yep, you're gonna forgive your ex, you're gonna forgive your parents. You're gonna forgive the person who screwed you over, the partner that took your money, the boyfriend who was unfaithful, uh, the person who did something to you really bad when you were young. That energy needs to be let go. There's no way you can get to be your most optimal self, your next level, your full potential, if you're holding on to anger or resentment. It just doesn't work. It really doesn't. And the only person that's not at peace is you. And most all of you I'm talking about right now, you're thinking about a circumstance, a situation, or a person. Yes, I don't care how bad it is, you gotta let it go, you gotta forgive. Because there's just not enough energy in you, in the world, in the universe, for you to hold on to that and simultaneously climb the mountain. It's like holding on to that takes away enough energy where the mountain seems big, the mountain seems hard, the mountain seems almost impossible to climb. Let that go and I can't tell you the freedom you will have. The ability to exhale. You will feel the best you've ever felt in your life. And you just gotta do it any way you can. You gotta find a way that maybe their circumstances in their life led them to do that to you. You have to find a way to realize what if God, the universe, whatever you believe in, designed that pain to make you the human being that you are today? What if it was all designed for you, even if it was the shittiest thing on the planet? I can't imagine some of the things you guys have gone through. 
But what if it was designed for you because that God, the universe, knew you could handle it? Not only just handle it, not to put you through it just for no reason, but to put you through it because there was a calling higher for you. There was a bigger purpose for you. You were put on this earth for something better. I don't think you'll reach the level of life you want, the abundance you want, the happiness you want, if you don't forgive and let go. And you can do that in any way you want. You could send someone an email and say, I forgive you. You could text them, you could call them, or you don't have to say anything. You don't have to pretend it didn't happen. You just let it out of you. Just think of if there's this much space in your world to go to another level. If there's any bit of that used up with hatred or, or anger or resentment, you don't have enough. You don't have enough gas to get up that mountain. Think if you just take that piece and let it out in the universe, however you got to do it. It was meant for you, their circumstances. You're going to open up a new part of your soul, of your body, of your energy, and you'll be able to run up that mountain. In 2019, you have to forgive, and I'd love for you to commit to that, no matter how hard it seems, okay? The other thing, too, um, because I see this was a key turning point in my life, forgiveness is, will set you free. Of course it will. Forgiveness is full connection, gratitude. Here's the thing it'll do. When you hold on to resentment or anger, you also stop trusting people. And when you don't trust people, you're pushing out all the amazing connections you can make. If you're open-hearted and really giving and trusting, will you get burned? Yep. Got to tell you the truth. But will you have exponentially more good come into your life and good people and good friends and good fortune if you do trust and you trust others? Yep. It's worth it. What's up, what's up? Hey, don't forget to look at the action steps we've posted below. They are the perfect way to take your success, abundance in this crazy world to a whole nother level.